Introduction to Failover Service What is Failover Service? The Failover Service ensures the availability of the application during a failure of the server. An active primary server and a passive secondary server are set in place so that when the primary server fails to respond, the secondary server is made active, ensuring the continued availability of the application services at all times. How does it work? Here is a flow diagram that explains how the failover service works. We have two servers, Server 1, Server 2, which has the same installation of Service Test Plus but on two separate physical boxes. These two server boxes are connected to a common database server. Now, when the primary server is started, the server checks for any previously configured or previous occurrence of instances. If there is no previous occurrence of instances, it means the server is good to go and the primary server is started. Now, once the primary server starts, it binds to the virtual IP and then it updates its serving status and its heartbeat continuously into the database. Since the database is a common shared database, the secondary server will start to listen to the database and get the status of the primary server and keeps its status updated into its settings. Now, the secondary server will check for the primary server's heartbeat periodically and keeps itself updated. This is the exact queue where the secondary server would be waiting to check if the primary server heartbeat fails to be updated into the database. If that fails, then that is exactly where the secondary server would pick up the pace and starts the service and ensures to perform the replication so that the file attachments or any other documents that is there on the primary would be replicated into the secondary server and the application is up and running on the secondary. So this is a simple diagram that explains how the failover service works on a newly configured application. Please make sure these following server requirements are in place to set up an effective failover service. Two 64-bit server machines with high network connectivity for installing the application servers. A common MSSQL database server. Read-read access for the Manage Engine folder on both the servers. A common IP address in the same network as the primary and the secondary servers two virtual or physical servers with different NIC card addresses to set up the failover service. File and folder permissions. Make sure you share the application, which is the Manage Engine folder of the primary server with the secondary server and vice versa. Ensure both the servers have mutual full read and write permission for the folder. This can be achieved by setting the access permission to the folder to everyone. To access the shared folder on your server, go to Start Menu, Run and Invoke the Mission IP slash Manage Engine. Provide the username and password to make sure an IPC connection is established between the machines. System Requirements to Set Up Failover Service The application roles and permissions that is required is SD Admin or Org Admin. For ESM setup, you will find the failover service under the ESM directory which can be worked by the Org Admin. For non-ESM setup, you would find the failover service configuration right under the admin tab, which can be managed and configured by SD admin. We are now going to configure the failover service and we are going to check how this works. So as a first step, we are going to configure failover service. To configure the failover service, I go right into the admin tab and in the admin tab, I have failover service configuration under general settings. Over here, the configurations are already done, but I'm still going to show you how and where you would get these details. Now we need the primary server details, the secondary server details, and the general information. The primary server details include the primary server IP, NIC card of the primary server, and the subnet mask. The same set of information is required for the secondary server, and the general details is the common IP that we discussed earlier. So I'm going to take you to the primary server so that we can see where and how to get the information and the same would be done for the secondary. So let's take a quick look at it. Right now I'm onto my primary server. I've opened the command prompt and I've accessed the Manage Engine Service Test Plus bin location of the application from the command prompt. Over here I'm going to execute the command iflist.exe. 
Now this is a file that is already packaged right within the application. So all you have to do is execute this command. And once you've executed the command, you would get the adapter details. You would see the adapter information is up. And then over here, you would get the adapter name. Copy this information and paste it right into the NIC of the primary server. Likewise, on the same primary server, you would execute the command ipconfig slash all. So after executing this command, you would look for the IPv4 address and that is going to be your primary server IP. Copy the information and paste the same right into the primary server IP details and you would get the subnet mask once you execute the same ipconfig slash all, copy the subnet mask and paste them right into the subnet mask of the primary server. Likewise, you will follow the same step on the secondary server to get the secondary server IP, the NIC card information, and then the subnet mask of the secondary server. Keep a note that if the subnet mask of the primary and the secondary are not within the same subnet mask, the failover service cannot be configured. So make sure the subnet mask of both the servers are the same. Also, when it comes to the virtual IP, the IP address that you provide in the general details should not be pingable, reachable, and it should not resolve into any workstation. So make sure on the command prompt, do a telnet or an NS lookup. And if that does not resolve into any workstation, then you're good to go. Common alias name. Provide the alias name using which the service test plus can be accessed. Now, when the primary server fails, the secondary server would switch over instantly. In order to provide seamless, uninterrupted application access, the alias name will come into effect. In case of failover, notify the corresponding user. So this is a place where you provide an email address who needs to get notified in case of failover. This way, the user would understand there is a failover interruption and they would act accordingly. Once the details are defined, make sure you enable the switch, enable FOS startup mode. This switch helps the service test service to start as a failover service. Now, once you enable the switch, you need to save the settings and restart the application. Only then the application will start in the failover service mode. Once you have configured these settings, go ahead and click on save. Now that we have configured the failover settings, let's go ahead and take a look at the other configurations. After configuring the failover service, you can track the entire history of the configuration from the history tab. Over here, you get a wide range of updates on who configured, who modified, what was the parameter that was modified, the date it occurred along with the time. Failover service file replication configuration. Under admin, we have failover service file replication configuration. Now this is a mandatory step in order to prove and validate the failover service is working. Over here, provide the primary server name and the machine's username and password. Likewise, provide the same for the secondary server. Now, this is important so that when the primary server and the secondary server are connected with each other, the file replication happens. This is basically to copy over the files and file attachments that is there on the primary server onto the secondary server. This is an important configuration that has to be configured in order to validate and to make the failover service a success. Without this step, the failover service will not work. Attachment settings. Under admin, under general settings, we have attachment settings. Now, you need to externalize the file attachments folder such that provide it on a network path. This is important so that if the primary server is not accessible, the secondary server is going to be up and running. And the secondary server does require the file attachments to be accessible in order for users to use and access the file attachments from anywhere. So make sure the file attachment folder is externalized and it is accessible. Update the settings over here and click on save. Now that we have configured the configuration of failover servers, the file attachments configuration and the replications configuration, we are going to take a look at the implementation of the failover service. To continue with the implementation, I'm now at my Service Test Plus primary server. On the primary server, we are now accessing Service Test Plus 
using the virtual IP or the alias URL. In this version, you can configure the failover service and start the application from the services or you can also start the application from the command prompt. I've started the application from the command prompt and as you're looking at the application, this is the primary server's application command prompt where the application has been started successfully. Now, we are going to go to the secondary server just to see the status of it. So here is my secondary server and from the command prompt you can see the secondary server is actively listening to the primary server. So as per our architecture that we saw a while ago, the secondary server is counting on the primary server's heartbeat. So it's constantly checking with the database just to see the activity of the primary server. Now, we have seen the application server of the primary and the secondary where the primary is active and the secondary is listening to the primary server. On the primary server, we are now accessing Service Test Plus using the virtual IP or the alias URL. And over here, we are going to create a ticket. So here is the application and I'm going to create a new ticket for server crash. So the important detail over here is that I am going to attach an inline image. So here is the ticket that I'm creating along with an inline image. And once the ticket is created, the inline image should be added right into my folder structure of the primary server. Now that I've created the ticket on my primary server along with an inline image, let's take a look at the file and folder structures. So I'm going to go right into my Service Test Plus installation folder, C Drive, Manage Engine, Service Desk, and Inline Image. So over here, if you notice, there is a work order, which is where the ticket's inline images are stored. And number two is the ticket ID. And over here, you can see the inline image that I've added through the ticket that was created on my primary server. Now, let's head to our secondary server and verify how the folder structure is listed. Here is my secondary server. I go to my service test folder and inline images. And as you can see here under the work order folder, you would only see only one folder listed, which is for a work order number one or the ticket ID number one. So there's no other folder that is created and there's no other inline images that is listed. Now that we have verified the file on the primary server and the secondary server, let me go back to my primary server and stop the Service Test Plus application from the command prompt. On the primary server, I'm now going to stop the Service Test Service from the command prompt. Now this is a situation where let's take in consideration that the application crashed. So I'm stopping the application from the command prompt. As per our architecture, the secondary server should be checking for the primary server's heartbeat in the database. Now that the primary application is stopped, the secondary server should kick in. So I'm right now on my secondary server and the secondary server is going to constantly get in touch with the database to validate the primary server's heartbeat. Now that the primary server is stopped, we are now at the secondary server waiting for the secondary service to take over and act as the active server. As you can see, the secondary server could not detect the primary server's heartbeat and the secondary server is now becoming the active primary server. So the folders, file structures are being loaded from the command prompt as a normal process. So let us wait for the application to start. Now that my secondary server is all started and it is now acting as my primary server, I'm going to log into Service Test Plus on my secondary server just to access the ticket that was created on the primary server. I'm now logged into Service Test Plus. I'm going to the request module. So as you can see, the ticket that was created on the primary instance is accessible. And the important thing to verify the failover service has happened is the replication process. So I'm now going to open the ticket. And as we can see over here, the ticket along with the inline images is created successfully. So this now shows how the primary server with the data on the primary server is replicated right into the secondary server. Not just that, the replication hang check happened and the secondary server is now our active primary server. So users will have a seamless transition between the primary and the secondary server 
the data transfer happens smoothly and the failover service that we've configured is successfully working and it is executed. Things to follow up for backup, restore and upgrade procedures. Please refer to the admin guide mentioned in the video description for procedures on the backup, restore and upgrade processes. So these are important line items for customers to keep in mind when you are planning for an upgrade, backup or a restore process. Licensing and activation. To configure and enable failover service, please make sure the failover service license is purchased as an add-on. The license is applied to the application which activates the failover configuration page in the admin tab. 